Hi guys, this is another video addressing viewers' comments and questions. And I'm kind of having a hard time figuring out what I should title these videos. Let me know what you guys think below. Thanks for watching. The welder I have doesn't let me taper off amperage, so I kind of have no choice but to leave a crater in whatever I'm welding. Thanks for sending that comment. This will make a very good topic. So what he's talking about is he's, he's got like a cheaper budget welder where you can't hook up a variable amperage controller like a foot pedal or a TIG button that I use. So essentially they come with one that looks kind of like this, but all it is is a simple off-on switch. So when you're welding parts, you have to be very mindful of exactly how hot you set your amperage, because if you go too hot, you're going to fry your part. If you go too cold, you can't get it to weld and fuse together. And so the issue he's having, from what I'm getting what he's saying, is he can get along, you know, he's probably getting along welding just fine, and at the end, he triggers it off. And then that makes the aluminum contract too fast, and then there's a big crater at the end, and those are prone to cracks. But so I've never used an off on switch before with a TIG, but I can set this up that way on my miller, and I'm going to replicate his issues. But I'm almost 100% confident I can figure out, I can give him some tips and tricks on how to, how to minimize the craters at the end of his weld, even without variable amperage. So we'll give it a try, see how it goes. You guys are probably getting sick of me doing T-Welds. Those are my favorite types of welds to do. For whatever reason, I can make them look really good. So we'll do a lap weld on this one, see how it goes. So this is going to take me a little bit. I'm just going to run you through the whole thing, you know, full disclosure on what I'm doing here, not editing it out so I look like I know, so I look like I know what I'm doing more than I really do. To do this with an off-on switch, I've got this set up. Okay, watch, it's off-on, so I'll trigger it, and it'll keep, it'll keep welding. And then you trigger it off. So that's what he's using. I have this set up so it's not a variable at all. So there's a little trial and error when you're welding parts. You know, this is eighth inch thick. So I'm gonna have to figure out the sweet spot of exactly what I need my amperage set at. That's the downfall of, you know, cheaper welders where you can't vary your amperage. So right now I've got it set. I'm gonna set it at 140, I guess. We'll see how that goes. See if this will tack it all together. Okay, that's a, that's a decent amount of heat. Might be too hot though once I get weld and you know it might start getting too wide of a bead. Putting a plate under the back side here so it doesn't teeter like that. Okay, first try, we're just, going, like I said, just doing off on. Okay, that was a pretty lucky guess for the amperage setting. That worked out almost perfect. But see the problem he's having? See how I chopped the amperage off right at the end and you got that little dimple? You don't want those because that's a thin spot where the weld's gonna crack. So I'll show you, I'll show you what I would do. It's kind of the same mentality as MIG weld, and like I've showed in a few of my videos, you come to the end and you let off the trigger and it sinks in like that, so all you do is just give it one more tap, let it cool for a second, and then tap it back on and add more rod and tap it back off again. At least that's my thinking. I Hopefully, hopefully it works out and it looks like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here and stop and try to not leave a crater and see how that goes.
Okay, easy as that. Okay, so on this first one, we got that low spot, prone to sort of crack. You know, if you had a part that was flexing or thermal expansion and contraction, like on an intercooler or any engine parts. And then here, so technically, there is, if you wanted to be a dork and argue it, technically there is a crater up here. But if you look down at the part, see how that's humped up a lot higher? So if you cut this and did a cross section, check this out so this first one is the one with the crater without trying to fix it and you can see how it's got that that little low spot where it's thinner versus this one see how humped up and thick that is that's going to guarantee you that that's not going to be a crack point Not the prettiest leaving it up this high, you know, you can only do so much. I'm sure, you know, this was my first try doing it. I'm sure I could try to master this a little better if I ever cared to use an off on switch, you know, and just trigger it a little bit faster and add a little less rod, but that's on the safe side. And if you guys have any good questions for topics and new videos, feel free to let me know below. That's what keeps this video series going. And the way I set this up, for like the off on switch with no variation in the amperage you just put this this is a miller you just put it from standard down here to hold so it holds the amperage until you trigger it off and you can do the same thing with the prime weld machines the 225 or the 325 i've been really happy with these machines especially for the price just click that button time out this cheap cast camera tripod broke and it dropped my camera right on the ground so I got to weld on another nub here so it locks back in place and won't fall off it's kind of funny how all the keyboard commandos on YouTube will they will critique every single weld they ever see but there are so many different scenarios where you want to put on one type of a weld versus another like this one right here you know the commandos they'd say oh that's a cold POS weld that's gonna fall right off but I visually saw it fuse in really good, and then I ramped off my amperage and put a big gob up here because I want this big tall stop for this mechanism to come around and hit. So yeah, never say do always do this or always do that when you're weld. And there's, you know, there's exceptions to every single rule. It seems like. Okay, back in action. See that little tack holding that spring in place. as it locks the camera. What's wrong with putting the control button on the bottom of the handpiece? Arthritis in the thumb joint doesn't help. So I'm not sure I know what he's talking about. I, I'm assuming he means put the button down on the bottom of the torch handle, but the way, at least the way I naturally hold the torch and probably almost everybody is kind of like a pencil, you know? You pinch it like that. So your main anchor points are your thumb here, and the side of your middle finger and that leaves your index finger free to do whatever it wants without moving the torch see how i can do whatever i want and the torch stays you know relatively still so if you put it on the bottom then how the heck do you hold the torch in place then you're trying to push up with your thumb to me that seems super awkward but or i guess you could wrap your hand over it like this and trigger it from the underside but for me that's torquing my wrist over funny that's just not that's just not comfortable so, you know, just do whatever's com comfortable for you, I guess.